When Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit, it did not mean Jesus was dragging his feet and needed the Holy Spirit to force him to do something. Hi everyone, I'm Canon Ambrose Louis. This is a continuation of my previous episode of studying the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 to 13. You can click on my channel and look for that episode. I will try to put a link in the description. And if you like what you are learning, please remember to subscribe to my channel. You will get updates uh, for new episodes. In the earlier part of my commentary, I discussed the connection between Jesus' baptism and his duty as the prophesied Messiah. In Mark chapter 1, verses 10 to 11, Mark recorded the heaven being torn open and the descending of the Holy Spirit on him like a dove. Do not mistake the Holy Spirit as a type of bird. Appearing to be like a dove does not mean it is a dove. During the baptism of Jesus, other than the public affirmation that Jesus is indeed the Messiah and the Son of God, it was one of the manifestations of God as Trinity. There is God the Father affirming Jesus as the Son and the appearance of the Holy Spirit. It is a clear picture of the three distinct persons of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But they are not three gods, but one true living God. This is why when we are baptized in Christ, we are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are not baptized in the name of Jesus only. We are baptized in the Trinity. As I have mentioned earlier, the baptism of Jesus is for our sake. Jesus instituted baptism for our salvation and regeneration. Those who are baptized in Christ share this mysterious life in the Trinity. As we are immersed or poured with water in the name of the Trinity during baptism, we are participating in the life of Jesus in the Trinity. St. Paul says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 12, that we die and rise together with Christ in baptism. Because of baptism in Christ, our lives are now hidden in God, as mentioned by Paul in Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. Our life is hidden in God of the Trinity. There is this mysterious life of ours being baptized in the Trinity. The grace of God is not only the work of the Son, but the three mysterious distinct persons moving in one will and mind. The Messianic mission of Christ is that inauguration for us to enter and participate in that life of God as Trinity. In Mark chapter 3, verses 12 and 13, after the baptism of Jesus, the Holy Spirit immediately drove Jesus into the wilderness. This may sound weird to some of us. If Jesus is one of the persons of the Trinity, which we often regard Jesus as the second person of the Trinity, why does the Holy Spirit need to lead and drive him? Well, the Trinity is always a mysterious doctrine. The Son of God and the Holy Spirit are distinct. When Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit, it did not mean Jesus was dragging his feet and needed the Holy Spirit to force him to do something. The mission of Jesus to save mankind included being the new Adam for us. The, new, uh, the term new Adam means new humanity or the new human race. St. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45, Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. When we teach Christology, which is a systematic theology subject on the nature, person, divinity, and work of Christ, we often regard Jesus as the new Adam. Jesus becomes the new prototype of the new human race. The old Adam failed and sinned, and Jesus is the new Adam for us with a new life. When we are baptized in Christ, we rise together with Jesus as a new human race. Therefore, it becomes necessary that Jesus is spirit-led for our sake. It is not that Jesus is less divine than the Holy Spirit or that Jesus knows less about the will of God. 
nor did the Holy Spirit need to drag the ignorant Jesus into the wilderness, so to say. That was not what it meant. Everything we see here has to do with the mission of Jesus as the Messiah to give us a new life and a new way of living in the Holy Spirit. The Gospel text also mentioned Jesus was driven into the wilderness. So what was Jesus doing in the wilderness? The wilderness often symbolizes a trial or testing. In the Old Testament, the Hebrews were roaming in the wilderness as testing and formation by God. The wilderness is a desolated place. It is a place that symbolizes difficulties, lack of comfort, and exposing our vulnerabilities. Humans are vulnerable to temptation when we are physically weak. Many of us often fall into sin when we are in physical distress. We do things and say things that can be very appalling. I remember um, my parents and grandparents told me stories of how our Chinese ancestors acted out insanely when they were so hungry in the olden days. People would literally kill each other for a tiny grain of rice. They were so hungry that when they saw one grain of rice, they would jump in and fight for it in violence. What would one grain of rice do to fulfill our hunger? But man have the capacity to commit on immorality when exposed to extreme hunger and physical threat. We are born with the nature of sin to do so. Jesus is the Son of God and the Son of Man. It was part of his mission to succeed as the new Adam. Jesus must overcome the temptation in the wilderness for us. The old Adam failed in the temptation and trial with Satan in Eden. The Jewish ancestors failed in the wilderness for lack of faith and grumbled against God. Jesus, as the new head of the new uh, human race, the new Adam, will triumph over his trial in the wilderness. And Jesus did victoriously overcome the temptation and deception of the devil while suffering from deprivation of food and other physical needs. This is an excellent way for the Messiah to start off his messianic mission. Um, what can we learn and apply in our life in this passage? Our life as Christian is not immediately victorious after our life of baptism. Baptism is just the beginning of our new life in Christ. There will be a time or season in our life that is led into the wilderness. We will face challenges and temptations. The only way to overcome was to be like Jesus, which was to fully depend on God. Do not be surprised. Some of us are still in the wilderness after our life of baptism in Jesus. Some of us have fallen into, tem into the temptation of the devil. If you are not well instructed or taught in the true faith in Christ, do not be surprised you are still in the wilderness. The devil will offer you the worst pleasures, the vanity of status and honor in this world. That was what the devil did to Jesus. Friends, unless you resist the world and Satan and turn to God, you will never walk into the fullness of life in Christ. All the prosperity gospel you believe in will never give you the true meaning of our life in Christ. The world can never satisfy you. Sooner or later, you will feel the emptiness in your life. For those planning to follow Christ and want to be baptized in Him, I hope you have learned that baptism requires you to turn away from the world to follow Christ. For those who are baptized in Christ, be it when you were a child or an adult. This gospel text reminds us of our life in Christ and the Holy Trinity. If we want to experience a victorious life in Christ, like our Lord Jesus Christ did in the wilderness, we must turn away from the world to follow Him. Peace be with you. <music>